this video is going to be looking at topic 3A energetics of the Edexcel IGCSE chemistry course and we're going to be focusing on the triple content in this topic. So our learning outcomes for this are to look at energy level diagrams for both exo and endothermic reactions. We're going to be looking at some bond breaking and some bond making and also how we use bond energies in order to calculate an enthalpy change. So let's firstly look at energy level diagrams. For an exothermic reaction, we already know that that means that we give out energy. An example could be a combustion reaction where we're going to give out heat. So what this tells us is that if we're giving out heat, the energy of our reactants must be higher than that of our products. And it means that our products that we form are more stable because they are at a lower energy. And we see a characteristic temperature rise with this particular reaction. Now, what we have to be able to do in triple is we have to be able to draw what's known as a reaction profile diagram. And that's what this diagram here is. So on the y-axis, you have energy. And on the x-axis, we have the progress of reaction. Notice that we don't actually need a scale or any numbers. This is just a rough diagram. And we show our reactants and our products at a lower energy level. And we ha always have a straight line with an arrow going from our reactants to our product, in this case facing downwards. And this straight line represents our delta H. So because we're giving our energy here, our products are going to be lower than our reactants. When we compare that to an endothermic reaction, you can see that the opposite is true in the reaction profile. So we start off with our reactants at a lower energy. An endothermic reaction means that it takes in energy. So we must be absorbing some of the energy from the surroundings, causing our products to be at a higher energy level. And again, we have our straight line with our arrow to show our delta H. This means that our products are slightly less stable than the reactants that we use. And we see a characteristic temperature decrease with this particular type of reaction. So we can use what we know about exothermic and endothermic reactions to help us understand bond enthalpy a little bit better. Now, during a chemical reaction, what actually happens is we are breaking bonds in our reactants and we are forming bonds in our products. So we know from conservation of mass that we have to have the same number of atoms on both sides of our equation. They are just simply put together in a different way. Now, with regards to bond breaking, overall, bond breaking is an endothermic reaction. Now, whilst you may think, well, when you break the bonds, you must be releasing energy, and that is true, we actually need to put quite a large amount of energy in in order to break that bond. So bond breaking overall is endothermic, which gives us a positive value. Bond making, on the other hand, is exothermic because it requires a, a release of energy when we bring together our atoms. So an example is like the one we see at the bottom here. So we have got hydrogen reacting with oxygen to give us two molecules of water. And what happens is we break these bonds in between the hydrogen and the oxygen and we require energy to do that. And we then release energy when we are making the bonds in our water. Now, if the reaction is endothermic overall, that means that we require more energy in order to break the bonds than is released when we make the bonds. If the reaction is exothermic, it means that we're going to be releasing more energy overall than we need in order to break the bonds. Now, that can be quite confusing, but once we start to do some calculations, it does become a little bit clearer. So we can calculate the enthalpy change of a reaction by looking at the energy that is used to make or to break bonds. And we do this using a value known as bond enthalpy. My biggest piece of advice for this would be to learn this definition. It can come up in exams and it will be a one or two marker in order to fully understand and show that you know what bond enthalpy means. So bond enthalpy is the amount of energy that is required to break one mole 
of bonds and the gaseous state. Now, those two parts that are double underlined are extremely important. So please make sure that you do have them in your answer. Now, the equation that we use is down at the bottom here. So the bond enthalpy, or sorry, the enthalpy change of the reaction overall is the sum. So this is the Greek letter sigma, which means the sum of. It is the sum of the energy to break all the bonds take away the sum of the energy of all the bonds that are made. And we're going to look at an example of how that actually happens. Now, don't worry about having to memorize any bond enthalpy values. You're not expected to do that. You will always be given the information in a table and a past paper question. And we'll see an example of that just later. So we're looking at the enthalpy change here of uh, methane plus chlorine to give us chloromethane and hydrogen chloride. So what we want to think about are what are the bonds that are being broken and what are the bonds that are being formed. My biggest piece of advice here would be to always break all of the bonds and always form all of the bonds. It just means that you're not going to go wrong in any way. So when you have methane, you have got four CH bonds that are being broken. Of course, our formula of methane is like that. Now we are told that the energy required for this is 413. So we do four times 413 gives us 1,652. Now for chlorine, we just have one CLCL bond that has to be broken. So that is 243. For the formation, where well, we're going to make chloromethane, which requires three carbon hydrogen bonds and one carbon chlorine bond and we're also going to make hydrogen chloride which is one hydrogen and chlorine bond and you can see that we can multiply all of the numbers as we need and we can get a total so to work out our enthalpy it is our total number of bonds broken so our total number from here subtract our total number from here and it gives us an overall value of minus 122 kilojoules this can also be displayed on an energy profile diagram, a little bit like this, but most of the time you will not be asked to draw the overall diagram showing the bond enthalpies. This is just to help you understand it. But we can see that we do get the same final answer as minus 122. So let's look at a second example where we've got enthalpy change of the combustion of methane. So again, methane is 4 carbon to hydrogen bonds and our oxygen is an oxygen oxygen double bond but we need to be aware that we do have two of them <clears throat> we're then going to form carbon dioxide which is made of two carbon to oxygen double bonds and we're also going to form water which is formed from um two hydrogen to oxygen bonds and we have two of them so we're actually going to be making four in total so when we multiply up the values we get our total values here and when we subtract the, two, the bonds formed from the bonds broken we get an overall value of minus 694 and we can see again we can draw this on a reaction profile now this is a little bit more of a simple reaction profile to the last one you could be asked to replicate something like this in the exam so because this is a negative value we know that it is exothermic so our reactant should be at a higher energy than our products the main difference from the diagram that we had previously is just that we actually write in what the reactants and the products are as opposed to just writing the words reactants and products. So let's have a look at a couple of past paper questions for these. So a student draws an energy level diagram for the complete combustion of methanol. We want to identify two mistakes that are within this energy level diagram. So if we're not sure, let's just quickly write out at the side here. We're gonna have CH4 plus O2 giving us CO2 and H2O and we balance it by having two oxygens and two waters. So if we look at, first of all, our reactants, well, we can see a glaring omission here that we only have methanol as one of our reactants. So our first mistake is that we are missing 
oxygen as a reactant. It's very important that you put all of your reactants and all of your products onto your energy profile diagram. Uh, we also know that this is going to be an exothermic reaction. And this should mean that our reactants are a higher energy than our products. Now, this is a problem here because we're drawing our products at a higher energy level. So actually, these should be lower down. So that's our second problem, is that the products should be at a lower energy than the reactants. And that's your two marks. This question is a four marker and it is asking us to use the bond enthalpy values in order to calculate the enthalpy change for this reaction. Now you can see that we do have a table of the bond enthalpies. As I said, you're not going to be asked to memorize these. Okay, so the best way to do this is to break it down. And you have your bonds broken on one side and your bonds being made or formed on the other side. And we just look at simply what it is that we're having to break. So we have got three carbon hydrogen bonds, which is going to be three times 412. We have got one carbon oxygen bond. So that is going to be one times 360. We've got one oxygen hydrogen bond. So that is going to be one times 463. And we also have one and a half times our oxygen bonds. So that's one and a half times 496. Okay. And when we add all of these values together on the calculator, we get a total of 2803 kilojoules per mole. The bonds that we are forming, well, we have two carbon oxygen bonds. So that's giving us two times 743. And we have four oxygen hydrogen bonds, which gives us four times 463. And when we multiply these, we get 3338. And we know that our enthalpy is going to be the sum of the bonds broken, subtract the sum of the bonds formed. So that gives us 2803, subtract 3338, giving us an overall value of minus 535. And of course, we need to have our kilojoules per mole value. And you can see that we've got our mark schemes for our two past papers. So we've got our two marks for our reaction profile and we have our four marks for our calculation and we get our final answer to be minus 535. Now the good thing with this particular question is that you can get transferred errors if you do make an arithmetic mistake and you, and you miss mark one or mark point two, you can still get mark point three and mark point four, provided that you have the correct sign and you do the calculation correctly. That's everything for topic three A, our energetics, for the triple content. Check back later for any other videos for all the different content that you may need help with. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment.